contacted him on Facebook and uh, I said, I gave him my number, I said, I need to talk to you. So he called me and I said, hey, we, we need an interim pastor. So he gave me three names and uh, the first one I called, he couldn't come for like three weeks and so the second one I called, this guy answered the phone, hello, this is Woody. <laughs> I thought, what? Did they get the wrong number? <laughs> I said, well, Walter gave me your number. And he said, well, I'm at the doctor. I'll call you back. So he, he did. And I said, well, listen, we're having a board meeting tonight. Why don't you and your wife come over? So they came over and we explained our situation. And they graciously offered to uh, fill in as our interim pastors for a while. And I knew I liked him right off the bat because number one, he fished. Number two, he tied flies. <laughs> and anyway, uh, like he said, six months they were our interims and then we decided to, uh, you know, kind of like putting a fish on a stringer and then when you decide at the end of the day, I think I'll keep that one. <laughs> so that's that's what we did with Pastor, Pastor Woody. And... Uh, I said to him one day, we was talking on the phone, and I said, you know, you're good at whatever you do. You're a good woodworker, you make these guitars, and you're a master fly tire. I, I've tied flies, and I can't tie flies as good as him. But anyway, he said, well, if I'm, if I'm that talented, why ain't I rich? Pastor, you are rich. You know how you're rich? You're rich in the Lord, and you've got a lot of friends. <laughs> and you can't you can't put a price on that anyway uh, we got to start with something funny here this minister dies and he's waiting in a line at the pearly gates ahead of him is a guy who's dressed in sunglasses a loud shirt and jeans a leather jacket and anyway, he has his hair slicked back. St. Peter says to the guy, who are you? The guy replies, I'm Joe Cohen. I'm a taxi driver from New York City. So St. Peter consults the list and says, enter into the kingdom of heaven. He gives him a silk robe and a gold scepter. So... The, uh, there's there's a minister behind him in line and the minister says to St. Peter he booms out I'm Joseph Snow I'm pastor of Calvary Church for 40 years St. Peter consults the list and says enter into the kingdom of heaven and he gives him a cotton robe and a wooden staff pastor says to St. Peter just a minute how can this be? You gave him a golden staff and a silk robe, and you gave me a cotton robe and a wood staff. St. Peter said to him, You preached to a lot of people when they slept, and he, he drove a lot of people when they prayed. <laughs> so anyway. Then there's another one. This guy like Ken here he was talented at the church so they decided at a board meeting they were going to put a hand dryer in the, in, in the restroom in the men's restroom so they hooked it up and anyway somebody a couple weeks later somebody noticed that the hand dryer was ripped off the wall so they they had a short board meeting and the one guy said, what? Who, who took the hand dryer down? And faster. I did. Well, what'd you do that for? He said, somebody put a sign on there. If you want to preview a next week's message, just press the button. <laughs> so anyway. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to, I've used this at different pastor's appreciation, but there's a little better twist on it today. And it's out of Exodus chapter 17. Uh, I'm going to start with verse 8. 
And anyway, uh, We're, we're having Pastor's Appreciation Day today, and it says appreciate is to grasp with full no knowledge and understanding the difference between right and wrong, and to admire greatly and recognize with gratitude. And then we're also honoring our pastor today, and it says honor, a good name, public esteem, reputation, showing respect, a leader of worthy of all possible honor. Pastor, I think you fit all those categories. I know you do. But anyway, <clears throat> the Amalekites, it says in verse 8, came and attacked the Israelites from Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go down and fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with my staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as long as Moses had... As Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held his hands up, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hand grew tired, they took a stone and they put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands and one on the other and side and one on the other so that his hands remained steady till the sun set Joshua overcame the Amalekites with the sword when the Lord said to Moses write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua bears it, hears it because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under the sun Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, For hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. So <clears throat> that's really a depiction there of what we should do with our pastor. We should undergird him. We should help him. You know, uh, we used to we used to take the inmates at the boot camp, the guards especially, especially the women women guards, and they would PT those guys and they would do arm circles. One, two, three, one, one, two, three, two, maybe two, three hundred of them at a time. And the big guys, it would kill them because they couldn't hold their arms up. You try doing that sometime. And uh, we had one guy there on the maintenance crew. He was up in years. And he would take those big, strong inmates out there, and he would just kill them with doing that. He'd, he'd do two, three hundred at a time, and they'd just be, they'd just be about crying. But anyway, picture, picture Pastor Moses there. And as long as he held his hands up, you know, Joshua was winning. And soon as soon as he would lower his hands, then the Amalekites were winning. So there's her and Aaron. They saw the problem. And, th and that's another point. If we see a problem in the church, we need to step up and address it. You know? Uh, we, we had a lot of people here in the past that... They, they, were, always, they were always here. And, and they're, they're gone now. So, so we need we need some people to to step up and fill those shoes, and uh, and also he said the Lord is my banner, and the Hebrew name for that is Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. Terrible is an army with banners. When the Israelites went out to battle, they would let the singers. And the praisers go ahead of the army. And they would they would come up singing and praising the Lord. And the, they would wave the banners like we have right there. And you know what? A lot of times they didn't even have to fight. They, the enemy would flee. They would, they would flee from them because they was petrified. And uh, anyway... As we raise our banners, 
as Moses did. That means one hand with no doubt, one hand with no fear that he is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And also, you know from the old cowboy movies or the detective movies, when you raise your hands or the war movies, that's surrender. Lord, I surrender all. I can't do it without you, but I'm raising this hand because I have no fear. And I'm raising this hand because I have no doubt that you're the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And you're going you're gonna to make me be a winner in this situation. So that's what we got to remember. And then it says, Mills, Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. For he said, Hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. And the Lord will be at war against the Amalekites. And I believe the Amalekites are, I believe they're, they're in existence today with the PLO and the, uh, uh, what is it, Hamas, Hamas and uh, over there in Israel. And they're, uh, you know, descendants when uh, Abraham took his maidservant, Hagar, and he had a child through her because they couldn't wait for, the, for his promise of Isaac. Thus crept in the half Arab and half Jew, and that they've been at war with each other clear down through for 2,000 years to today. It's still... You know, we still are having problems there in Israel on the West Bank, and they claim it's their ground, and they'll never get it because it's God's ground. And he gave that to Abraham and the covenant. And no matter what president comes in there or what they say, that'll never happen. And every time the United States gets sticking their nose in that situation, things go bad here. You can see that right now. But anyway, uh, like I said, the Amalekites are still, they're still well and fine. And, uh, but you know, the Lord, a lot of times down through Israel, through their history, he, you know, even uh, in the book of Judges where he had the different judges, he'd, he'd give Israel victories, but he would always let a, he'd always let a remnant there as a thorn in their side because when they fell away from the Lord and started doing the wrong things then God would raise up the Philistines or the Amalekites or whatever and they would they would attack Israel and uh, so I, I believe down till today of course you know the Jews even today haven't recognized Jesus as their king you know they think they think that he's he's not he hasn't come and he you know but they they still in that they're still in that mindset a lot of them now there's a lot of born again Jews but they're you know they're still looking for the Messiah you know but he's still their chosen pe he God's chosen people and uh, like I said no matter what goes on over there I have a couple more scriptures I want to read here and. Uh, Psalms 84, 84, 10 through 12. It says, better, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Uh... You know, I was laying in bed last night. I was thinking about an old friend I had here, Carl Lindstrom. Old Carl. Carl was my friend. Carl was not a very good-looking man. He he had some birth defects. He talked with a lisp. He had kind of some thick glasses, but he loved God. He was here every time the doors were open. Every time. And he would always stand back there by that door. And he would wait for somebody to pull in that was elderly. And he'd run out and help them in. Especially my mom. 
he'd wait till my mom and dad, my mom, my dad would leave my mom off for a year and he'd run out and grab my mom by the arm. She loved Carl. But uh, he passed away. I used to, I used to mess with him all the time. As soon as I'd come in, he'd come look me up because I'd rag on him and he'd, he'd give it right back. He loved Notre Dame. And I threatened to buy him a Penn State sweatshirt. And uh, one year I wrapped up a Notre Dame sweatshirt and I said, okay, Carl, I told you I was going to do this. This is, this, is, this is your Penn State sweatshirt and you better wear it while you open it up. And he was smiles from ear to ear. But, but he was faithful to this church. And he was faithful in all of his house. And we need to be like that. And uh, now I have another scripture here. Proverbs 3, 5. I can't read this without thinking about Mel. This was, this was Mel's favorite verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Uh, that was Mel's. I sat on the board with Mel for probably 20 years. And he was board, chairman of board. He was Sunday school teacher. He, he was uh, quite a guy. And every time, him and Ken were up here all the time fixing something. And uh, he was always with Ken. And when we had something to do, he was always here. And uh, I'll never forget, we was over here one night, and uh, the arc light was out between the garage and uh, the Family Life Center. And that's about 25 feet higher. We had a ladder against it, and we, all of us younger guys was debating who was going to go up and put a new bulb in there. And everybody was kind of chicken. <coughs> Mel says, get out of the road, I'll go up. And he's, he's like almost 80 years old. He scampered up that ladder. And God, God honored him with divine health up until the very end. And I think if he wouldn't have had that surgery, that was a mistake. But here nor there, it was God's time to call him home. And then Rick Stone was here last week, his dad, George. Him and Mal used to go back and forth at each other all the time about who was the oldest, you know, and they'd rag on each other. George, we're over in the garage, and he's like 80 years old. He fixed all of our stuff here. He was a good mechanic. Some Ken said something to him about something with the truck, and plump, down on the floor and underneath that truck. I couldn't do that, you know? But there again, God, God honored those men with with long life because they gave service to him. And also we had a food bank. George was up here every Thursday, went to Wigman's when they were giving out the free food, brought it over and he was faithful to that. He kept that van running. I, I think he put, a lot, he put a lot of his own money in that van. Yeah. So, you know, and then, and then I have another scripture here in Proverbs 3. Verse 9. This, this is something you want to keep in mind. And I've, I've failed the Lord on a lot of things, but I've always, this has always been the most important thing to me. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with your first fruits. All of your crops and your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. You, you, you know, God has a, God has a strange system. You gotta give to get. You gotta be, you gotta have a giving heart. You gotta be willing to to give, to get. And God says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive, and it is. And uh, you know, you can shovel it out, but God has a bigger shovel. And, and, and all the time won't be, well, I have a $30,000 a year job. If I give ties, I'll get a $60,000 job. No, it doesn't work like that. But, you know, if you can get out of bed each day 
and, and enjoy the beauty like we have today. It gives you eyes to see. You know, I get up every day and I hurt. My wife told me the other day, quit your stinking whining. And uh, but anyway, that's, that's my nurse wife, you know. But anyway, uh, you know, he'll, God will never be beholding to men. He'll, you know, if you, you give, he'll give you back. Ken says he comes up here, he's up here all the time. And he says God blesses him, and he does. You know, I've, I've had physical things. You know, I, I came up here after I had surgeries, and I ran, we cleaned the church. And I, I had to work for about 10 minutes and sat down for 10 minutes. But you know what? I'm, I'm almost back to where I need to be. And uh, God's blessed me in that. And, uh, you know, they say a man's wall is 18 inches from his heart. And if God's got your heart, he should have your wall. You know? And, uh, hey, let's face it, folks. If we were, and, 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 and there's, you know, I can point a finger, but there's four pointing back at me. Amen. If we were all doing what we were, should be doing, there'd be more people in here. Let's face it, if we're all doing what we should be doing. But anyway, uh, everybody gets quiet when you talk about money. But I, I realize, you know, we're in, we're in high fuel cost and high food prices and everything is just sky high right now and it's stretching everybody's budget. And I, I don't know about you, but usually by the end of the month I have more month than I have money left. But God, you know, he meets, he meets my needs and, and even some of my wants. And uh, uh, we just have to remember to honor him. And uh, but anyway, today it's about honoring our pastors. But anyway, I, I have kind of a little funny here to close with. Uh, if I got it all here. Uh, this is uh, the Tate. This is called the Tate family. T A T E. The old man dictate wants to run everything. Uncle rotate changes everything. Sister agitate who stirs up trouble with help from her husband irritate. Hesitate and his wife vegetate who want to put off everything till next year. And aunt imitate who wants to be like all the others. And devastate wants to be the voice of doom. Potentate wants to be the big shot, but all members of the family aren't bad. Brothers facilitate, quite helpful in church matters, and delightful, happy members of the family facilitate, cousins co coagnitate, and meditate, always think things over, and lend helpful and steady hands. And of course, the black sheep of the family, amputate, who was has completely cut off himself from the church. How about you? Know anybody from the Tate family? <laughs> so I have one more little thing here and then This is uh this is called seeing the big picture. Sometimes God permits things, other times he actually plans them. Either way, he's got a definite plan in mind. In the midst of unspeakable heartache, Job said, He performeth the thing that is appointed for me. When you realize that God has appointed something for you, it changes how you see it. It's like flying on the ground. Your view is limited, but 10,000 feet up, everything looks different. Now you're seeing what God sees, the big picture. The Bible says after Job came through his trials, he was blessed twice as much and he had, as he had before. Does that mean if you lose a $30,000 a year job, you'll get $60,000 a year one back? 
or that your checkbook will always balance and your car will never break down or your health will never fail. No, sometimes God rewards our faith with things we can't measure in monetary value, like relationships, joy, uh, character, peace you didn't have before, a fresh sense of purpose, protection from danger, favor with others, clearer understanding, more compassion and intimacy for him. What value would you place on those? Here are three things you need to keep in mind. Number one, God wants you to trust him whenever you're going through. Two, when it's, re <clears throat> when it's your responsibility, God expects you to fulfill it. In order to bless three, in order to bless you, he sometimes moves in ways that are hard to understand or explain. Why? So that the answer comes, there will never be no doubt who gets the credit. Amen. Amen. That's right. So, you know, God, God sometimes puts us through things, and we do go through them. And, uh, but he's always there with us. And, you know, uh, if you're here this morning and you're not a Christian or, you know, I can't tell you if, if you give your heart to Jesus Christ, everything's going to be hunky-dory, but I will promise you one thing. He'll be with you through everything you go through. He'll undergird you and uphold you. I, I talked to my nephew last week, and he just had prostate surgery. After the surgery... He got home and he passed out. He had blood clot in his lung, one in his leg. They rushed him to the hospital and uh, he's all right now. But the same day, his son, his wife's son, was five months pregnant. She lost her baby. And this was her fourth miscarriage. And he said, you know, Uncle Scott, I don't understand it. He, I said, well, I don't either. But I said, you know, uh, I said, I, I know, I, uh, one thing I want to ask God, I said, because I lost, I lost my son, I said, when I stand before him, why, why do you give people, children, or take children from people that want them and people that don't want them and abort them? That's, that's something I don't understand. And I never will. And, uh, but anyway, you know what? God's, God's going to bring that young couple through that. And I hope yeah. maybe they have a, a baby for an adoption or whatever God has for them. Mm -hmm. But I know if it's five months old or it's 18 years old like my son or like you two went through that, it's not easy. But, you know, God's, God's with us. And uh, so anyway... Uh, we got some gifts here for Pastor and his wife, and uh, I want them to come up front. Okay. I think uh, anyway, uh, I think you'll really enjoy that. Do you want them to open that one right now? Yes, please. Yes. This this big one right here, isn't it? Yep. We Thank want you. you to open this right now, Pastor. Yeah, it's Penn State. Don't drop it. I want the Penn State. I think it's great. I don't know anything about it. I'm totally serious. I'm not agreeing with photography. I know a little bit about that. Maybe a little bit about that. We're five years.
going to make one of these. This is an amen sign. Yeah. I was going to build one of these and hang it right here and have a little button, of course. Well, there you go. And there, there we go. This is awesome. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, everybody. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And thank you, and thank you, and thank you, and thank you, and you, and you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I think you like it. Okay, uh, I'll ask you and Dole to come up here. We're going to pray for this couple. Mm -hmm.